So, boom. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, um, this is uh, this is Jewish ethics, right? I didn't get the wrong class. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, a little confusing. Um, there's gonna be one short uh, homework, two two question homework assignment due a week from well, practically a week from today. Okay, so I'll give that at the end. All right, let's review what we did last time. Did anyone think about any of it over the weekend? Yeah. A little bit. Go in your mind a little bit. Okay, we'll we'll review everything. Okay. Um, so don't give yourself until the day you die, right? And we had four questions. What does it mean to believe in yourself? Um, why shouldn't you? Like, what's the mistake that a person would be making? Uh, what's the practical consequence that you'd suffer if you like neglected the advice? And then why? Sh uh, sorry. And then why until the day you die? Like, why does it have to specify that? We did Rashi, who said uh, he just gave the example of, Kohen, uh, of Yochanan the Kohen Gadol who became a Tzaduki. Okay. Now, we kind of I kind of like dropped the idea bomb like at the very end of class, and then you know, and then ran. Um, <laughs> So did, can anyone either in, uh, in their own words or in terms of what they wrote in their notes summarize like how did Rashi answer uh, any of these four questions? Well, number one is the most important, obviously. We kind of, well, it was either, either, the, the, guess either I was inferring it from Rashi or it was my own idea inspired by Rashi. Oh, you're right. Oh, Rashi just gave an example. Yeah, I off. I'm going to put answers just like don't think that you at any point in your life, that's you like, for good. Okay, good. Don't think that the you is is the you for good. Anyone else have anything on uh, number one? Yeah. Yeah, Ayala? Yeah, like you are not a specific thing. You're just a combination of your decisions and that will keep changing. Okay, good. Right. So that was the thing is that the, the you, the real you is not a specific thing. It's not like a, there's no real you that's like lurking inside. You are a product of your decisions and that changes throughout your life. Okay, good. Um, any other answers to any of these other questions before we raise our own? Yeah. Well, I had a question. All See, I knew, time. I could tell when you, when you, <laughs> that you're going <laughs> to raise your own question. Let's review first and then, then yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do I raise my hand that like, you know, I have <laughs> No, it was more the glint in your eye. Like, like, oh, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. So what else did we say? Um, what is the, um, what, what would happen if you, if you did believe that there was a true you? Can you, yeah, can you explain what you mean by that? Yeah, like you just think if you're all set to go and you wouldn't like try to grow or change or do anything differently. Okay, that's definitely a possibility. We're actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we didn't really flesh out this point here. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. I know we said that like you, So let me show you my summary of what we did last time. Um, and, uh, and then we'll use that as a springboard for talking about it. And then Leah can ask her question. Uh, we went through the, oh, for, sorry. We went through the Rambam who said that you could be whatever you choose to be. Okay, so here's, here's um, uh, either Rashi's idea or my insight based on Rashi. So the Midrash is literal, okay? Um, don't believe in the existence of a true self. Um, you know, what does the word immutable mean? Not unchangeable, not unchangeable. yeah, not changing. Um, who you are can change in very, very dramatic ways. And you can see that from Yochanan Kohen Gadol. You would never think that a guy who's been in the highest position of a voter in the base of Mikdash would become a, a heretic, but he did. Um, and just because you've been a certain way for a long time does not mean that you're going to be that way forever. And if you don't realize this, you might end up changing without realizing it. Because how would that happen? Like, in other words, how would believing that there's a real me, how could that make you prone to changing in a bad way? Your definition of like what is good and what is evil is changed because you think no matter what you have the objective. Uh, can you explain what you mean a little bit more? Like as you're changing, you don't see the change ah. because you've accepted all the change as right. You accepted all the changes right? right? You accepted because, uh, or you accepted who you thought you were as right? You said, no, you accepted the changes in context with who you are. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so in other words, if you define yourself in a certain way, then you could be changing, but then as long as you're defining those changes based on your label for yourself, right. then you're not going to really notice how far you've gone when you change. Like, let's say, let, let's like concretize that with an example. Uh, anyone have an example? Anyone catch what Leah means? No, I need to okay, so let me, let me give an example. So tell me if this is what you mean, right? So remember we had... Um, uh, uh, we had the, the talk I gave you guys at the end of 11th or at the end of your high school thing about when you go to college, um, like your, you have to be careful about little changes that you make. So let's say you, let's say you define yourself as 
like an Orthodox Jew, whatever that means, right? But then let's say you start changing in your behavior, but because you're labeling yourself as an Orthodox Jew, so then you won't notice that those changes are inconsistent with that definition, and you could slip very, very, very far without really noticing it. Yeah. Does that make sense, Ayala? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Elisha? I don't really understand how you labeling yourself like that. Um, you know, if you don't acknowledge that every action affects... So what, what it sounds like Leah's... I'm not saying that this is my understanding. I'm just trying to articulate what Leah's saying. Leah's saying that, that as long as you can think of yourself as a certain type of person, then you will not notice when, change, when, when your behavior is inconsistent with that. So here, let me give you another example. Like, let's say, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not gonna ask for a survey here, okay? A lot of people like to think of themselves as nice people, right? Oh, I'm a nice person, you know? <laughs> but then also a lot of people occasionally will, will act really meanly towards somebody. But as long as you're thinking of yourself as, oh, I'm, I'm such a nice person, then you might not notice that change. But if you, if you realize that, no, I am not essentially anything, I am what my decisions are, so then you realize if I act this way towards a certain person, I'm not a nice person. Let's say, let's say, let's give an extreme example. Let's say you're always mean or you always pick on a certain person. So then you can't say, oh, I'm a nice person, but I pick on this person. No, like you are being a mean person, you know, in your actions here. I don't know the label really. So maybe label is the, the, the wrong word. Uh, what, I'm, what I meant by label is like a, a belief of who I, this belief of who I really am. So if you're saying like, despite I'm mean, just one person, but like, I'm still a nice person. Yeah, in other words, you can use it to like rationalize your behavior. That's what, uh, yeah, that's what Leah was saying. Nice right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, is, Leah, is that what you're saying? Or, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a different take, which I'll share in a second. Like those people that like, they dress me as some like Brooklyn or wherever they live, but then when they go to Florida, mm. they dress, like, <laughs> they're not saints, but they'll, they'll consider themselves as like Brown Halacha because. Right. And, and, and it's because of this idea that there is a real me and that allows them to, to dismiss other behaviors. Oh, that's not the real me. That's not the real me. That's not the real me. That's just me for that. I feel like that might be more sensitive to get involved. Okay. Good question. What's, what would be the opposite of, of uh, like, in other words, how should you view yourself? Yeah. Yeah. So according to this, how should you view yourself? Yeah, because if you never view yourself as anything, then like, you, you can't change. Well, you can change your actions because you're viewing yourself through your actions. Right. How do you measure your actions? You have a lot of actions. Yes, you have a lot of actions. Yeah. So this is a, this is a really really good question. It's not like a, it's not like that's the whole point. You're not like having one day. If you're doing your actions as you're nothing, then like then there's no point in anything. So let's just like working on yourself, on your actions. So can I take? Let me take one step, which is not a full answer, but I think it's a step you have to take. Uh, someone said you have many actions. Is that you know, there, there are many actions to do. So I think the first step is to realize that the attempt to boil it all down to, a, to like one self or one thing, that's not something that we can do. We, all, we have lots of actions and lots of, uh, of midos, you know, good and bad, and we're very, very complex. Who's the only one who can actually like label a person as one thing or another? God, right? I shouldn't say person, right? <laughs> right? And, and, and this is, yeah, this is a very relevant thing for um for russia and yom kippur because this is what we say which is that hashem uh you know passes judgment on rosh hashanah which is finalized in yom kippur and only hashem has the ability to judge who you are no no one of us can actually define ourselves in a certain way because of this complexity and we also don't know like all the dimensions of ourselves like you might have parts of yourself they are not aware of or they haven't expressed themselves yet and that's why we say how should you view yourself you know, in terms of like Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the judgment, a benoni, right? So someone in the middle uh, that you shouldn't view yourself as a tzaddik and you shouldn't view yourself as a Russia. So I, I, I say that this is not an answer to your question because maybe the answer is you cannot define yourself as either. The closest thing you could do is to say, I don't. I have elements of good, elements of bad. I have different actions, um, and I can change myself, but I can't conceive of what my my real self is. Only Hashem can do that. Is that yeah. now? Now I'll tell you the part why I'm not answering. You're, what you were asking for when you said what's the opposite is, like practically speaking, how should we think of ourselves from the day to day? You know, like if we're not, there's no real core self. Then how? What, what's like the thing that replaces that mentality? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Also, because you think that like if you keep saying like if you're thinking through your actions and you're analyzing your actions, 
you want to keep changing? Like, why would you want to keep changing if you feel like that's going to change? Right. Okay. Good. Good. Good question. You're doing the right thing if you're constantly just trying to change. Like some things are just good to stay where they are. Right. Okay. Very, very good questions. These are good tuba questions also. Look at individually and you can like look at this action, look at like think about it and see if like in reality, like what it is, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Yeah. And like if you do that to each action, then you'll be like constantly rethinking. Okay. That's the answer. That, that's a very, very good answer. That, I was gonna give an answer along those lines, but I think Ayala said it better. Is who cares what the real self is? In other words, practically speaking, that's not going to influence your decisions. Um, or at least that's not the best way to go about making decisions. The best way to go about making decisions is each decision in isolation and then knowing that you're building who you are based on that. Now, I, I'm, I'm hesitating because the idea, I'm a, I, I'm a, the new idea I'm going to focus on today is like contrary to that maybe. Okay, so maybe you'll get an answer that you like. We're going to do Ramam today. Okay, maybe you'll get an answer you like from that. So you'll have to let me know after we do Ramam uh, if that provides the type of answer you're oh, looking for. Wait, so you're saying your left's a little... Oh, you're allowed to look back at your past actions, but you're not allowed to look forward. No, I'm saying that you should look at your present decisions, knowing that that is building who you are. But until you die, then you can't see the total sum of who you were. Yeah. Is it worth looking back at your past mistakes? Or you just look at your past mistakes? Looking at your past actions is good because you can learn from them. But looking back and then judging who, like yourself as good or bad as a person as a whole, I don't think that's a productive line of thinking, you know, uh, because of the reasons we said it's too complex. It, 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 it just doesn't, it's not practical. It doesn't affect anything, you know. Yeah. Um, let me answer the question uh, of, um, uh, let me elaborate on this point, what I was going to say, and maybe this is also a satisfying answer to you, Elisheva. I think, or sorry, not an answer to the question you asked, but to the thing you were bothered by earlier. Um, if you view yourself as unchangeable, like the real me can't change, then you lower your guard. And that actually makes you prone to changing in ways you didn't expect. So Yohanan the Kohen Gadol viewed himself as I am an, uh, uh, an Evid Hashem, or I'm, I'm an Obed Hashem, I'm someone who serves Hashem. And, and because he viewed himself that way, we don't exactly know what happened, but that made him prone to going off the derech. But if he viewed himself as, well, right now, I have been a Kohen Gadol for the last 80 years, but I have to be on guard against the Yitzhahara, and I could change if I don't protect myself, then he would have been less prone to changing. You know, it's not like, like if you say, like, oh, I, I, I've, uh, I, I'm good, I'm safe, you know, then that's when the Yitzhahara can get you. I'll give a, a dramatic example of this, is when you're dealing with... Um, with any addiction, whether it's a substance addiction, whether it's a behavior addiction, whether it's anything like that, then it, people, you know, um, people advise you to not say that I'm cured. Okay, they say they advise you to say that I am, you know, I'm in recovery or I am. Uh, what was that? Like people are. Right, exactly, yeah. Um, remission. remission, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounded wrong. I was like, that sounded a little like like, like dollar signs came up when you said that, and I didn't know why. <laughs> um, I'm so like in the mind. Yeah, so in other words, um, and, and the reason why is because a person can have an addiction and can be, uh, can, you know, not have a relapse for 30 years, and then one day they can have a relapse, you know, and if they allow themselves to think, oh, I'm over it, I'm cured, then they lower their guard and then that makes them prone to change, you know? Um, so similarly here, if you view yourself as, oh, I am essentially a tzaddik or I'm essentially, you know, not a nice person or I'm essentially religious and that's who I am, then you, you get lured into the sense of security that, oh, I can't change. Nothing that happens to me is going to change me. But if you view yourself as I constantly need to be on guard and assess everything as it comes to me, then you, you, your defenses will be better. That's my understanding. Did I have you ask your question yet, or did you? No, I no. think it does still apply. Okay. So there's like this idea, I don't know if it's a true idea in Judaism, that every person's soul is like unique. And they have like a nature to themselves, which is programmed into like who they are. And then they have like a path that they're going to take in their life. So I feel like that kind of is contradicting this idea. Okay. So just say those three things again. You said every soul is unique. Soul is unique and it has its own path so every soul being unique then i uh i i, I can uh, get on board with okay that okay. that each of us i mean obviously the the we all are the same species so we have we all have the tzalem elokim the part of us that thinks and seeks truth um so that that part's the same but each of us has a unique 
a unique, you know, um, unique set of potentials, strengths, weaknesses, interests, you know, that's what makes our telemedicine unique. Like I, I call it like the, um, or you tell me if this rings true with your experience. Okay. I'm sure you've had good teachers, right? Throughout, you know, like several good teachers throughout your schooling, but you notice each of them has like a different style and a different like emphasis and a different, you know, um, like flavor to like their, their teaching. I call that like the telemedicine fingerprint. You know, like each of your fingerprints is uh, is like unique. Each each person has like their own their own unique way that their mind approaches knowledge. You know, um, so that that I, I agree with. Okay, but the fact that there's like a path that is not, to my knowledge, a Jewish idea, because that would kind of suggest like there's like destiny or like like right. predeterminism, and, there's no free and then there's no free will. You know. But then about the the soul thing, I wasn't necessarily talking about like strengths and weaknesses. I was talking about how like. In Torah, they'll say like David was a very zealous person. Like, yeah, it's a trait he was born. Ah, so that's that is not in your soul. That's in your personality, and your personality is really part of the physical. That's in your emotions, and it's not that he's born with that. You can't actually be born with a trait. You could be born with a predisposition towards a certain trait, um, uh, which means that it's easier for you to acquire that trait or harder for you to acquire that trait. Like I'll give you an example for me. So. Um, and, and remember, there's no such thing as a good trait or a bad trait. Okay, all traits depend on how you use how you use them. You know, so uh, I'll give you a personal example, right? So, I'm a very passionate person when it comes to like teaching and learning, but paired with that passion is also I can get very like intense about certain things. And I, my my uh, my my own personal theory about this is, um, you know, my dad's side is uh, Kohanim. I don't know if you know that. Do you know that? No. Yeah, so I'm not luckily a Kohen because I'm a Gare, right. but I got all that Kohen blood. And what what are Kohanim known for? A lot of things. Right, but what's the Mida that they're uh, the... Oh, like they're really like, good, at, good workers? Okay, that's true. Mm -hmm. What's the negative Mida? I don't know. <laughs> Zealous, angry, fiery, like, uh, you know, they could be oh, like that. that makes so much sense. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay. And on my, my mom's side of the family, uh, we're descended from Chinese warlords. So, <laughs> so like I tell myself, like, like maybe I'm prone to this intensity and this passion, which could be harnessed for good or harnessed for bad. I wasn't born with it, but it's something that was easier for me to fall into, you know, because of my nature or because of my nurture, you know? Um, so that's how I understand David's thing. So that, that's like, you know, it's, it's a, a, a trait. It's not part of his soul. It's part of his psyche. It's part of his personality. And he's prone to it, but not destined to have it. And he can channel it in different ways, just like I'm saying I could channel this at being like angry at people or like being passionate about ideas, you know? Right. Yeah. So you can't think about, or him or anyone else can't think about himself like I'm a zealous person, but I, I can use my traits. Yeah, he, he, what he could say, yeah, what, what could David say about his, uh, his like, let's say zealousness? Like what would be an accurate statement to make? Not I am a zealous person that's like falling into this. Yeah, is that my, my, my personality, my emotions are prone to acting zealous, zealous, zealously, right? Zeal you, not zealous, yeah. I mean, even if you change the way you say it, like, yeah, it doesn't necessarily change the way you view it. You know, like, right. Every time you think of, like, anything, you just be like, oh, like, this person is, um, this person is, um, shy. So I should say, like, when I think about something, I should, like, rethink everything and be like, this person is prone to <laughs> yes, I, I, I do think that because then you're not making it about the person, you're making it about their actions. And making when you make it about the person, it's harder to think of a person being able to change. Whereas if you think about it based on your actions, it's easier to change. Like I, that's actually an example we're going we're gonna to go into here is like if you say, for example, um, like I am, uh, I am a disorganized person, right? So then you're defining yourself and it's hard for you to think to, to change to change that but if you say i have disorganized habits so then that treats it as something that you can then think about well how can i change my habits you're not making it a quality of yourself yeah, but you're just saying, you're not necessarily no but saying it the, the language you use to describe something influences the way you think about that thing i was actually talking to my brother about this we we're talking about how my mom like when she gets mad she's, she's not calm yeah. <laughs> she's going, she's like, <laughs> so my brother and I were saying how like when we get mad, we have to work on it. Yeah. Like, we know we have that like gene. That yeah, we yeah. Start yeah, that's good. Yeah, see that, that and that's and it'd be very easy to just say like, oh, I come from people who get who scream when they get mad, and therefore like I am a person who screams when I get mad. But if you think about it as the if you start talking about it in terms of the behavior, it makes it easier to change. 
Okay, in the interest of time, let's go on to the, because this is our last Jewish ethics class for the week. Yeah, sure. For the week, um, I kind of figured out what I was confused about. Sure. I get what you were saying before about, like, you define yourself, like, oh, I'm disorganized. You kind of use that as an excuse yeah. to work on it. Then how does that connect to the Yochanan thing? It seems like he kind of said, oh, I'm done growing. It seems kind of different. Like, he's kind of saying, oh, I reached my max. Like, I'm at the highest level I can get. That doesn't really no. So the, the, and that's why I I understand him to mean, or I understand Rashi quoting him to mean that he believed in himself, meaning he believed I have served God as a calling God for eighty years. This is who I am, and that made him lower his guard and be prone to switching switching sides. That that's that's why I took that approach. Okay. I'm still confused by it, but now at least I know what I'm. Okay, good. I'm, I'm going to think about it some more and see if I can like uh, uh, get a clear understanding about what, what you're finding confusing. But I'm glad we got some clarity. Okay, so Rambam. Um, so Rambam says as follows. Um, uh, this is the mission. Uh, no, it's, this is not from the mission Torah. Did I accidentally write mission Torah there? There's two. Oh, sorry. No, this is the um, the the second uh, Rambam. Pirkei uh, Avos. Is is it on the sheet? Sorry, I not put it on the sheet. Hold on. Maybe I'm on the wrong sheet. I think you're yeah, on you're the wrong sheet. Yeah, yeah, you're on EO. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought there, there was only one sheet. Uh, oh, I see. Rachel wasn't here and was someone else. We didn't get a thing. Yeah, we I, I, yeah, did we not get a Did I hand out these sheets? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, is that why? I didn't remember a rock sheet no, in yeah. our hands. Oh, wait, we yeah. saw on the board. Oh, is that? I was wondering why I had eight of these. <laughs> I was like, did I print two copies here? Take, yeah. Wow. Okay. My bad. Uh, here you go. You can take them. Pass it down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I I I uh, I just I forgot. Yeah. See, I didn't say I'm a forgetful person. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, uh, he. I'm gonna translate this in the interest of time here. So he says. Um, Oh, now as we read this, ask yourself, what is the difference between the Rambam's interpretation of the statement and Rashi's? Okay, he says, A person, even though he has acquired, oh, you see where we are, it's on the first page at the bottom. Yeah, um, even though a person has acquired a virtuous character trait in his soul, the um, and strengthened it, he should not literally withdraw his hand, I mean, he shouldn't stop. You know what kefil uh, is? Double. Double, right? So he shouldn't cease repeating good actions. In order to. Yeah, meaning. Yeah, add strength, right? In order to add strength, right? The al yivtach viomar. He shouldn't trust or be confident and say, Zomala shakvar huska. The EF Shashatasur. I already acquired this trait. It's impossible for it to be removed. EF Shashatasur, because it's possible for it to be removed. And that's why Hillel says, until the day of your death. So, how would you characterize, think about it for a second, how would you characterize the difference between Rambam's interpretation of this Mishnah and uh, Rashi's? <laughs> The Rambam um, is saying that you could acquire traits, but you do have to make sure to continue them. But like, it is such a thing as acquiring certain stuff. Right. There is such a thing as acquiring certain traits. And what is he saying? Uh, how is he answering our first question? What would it mean to believe in yourself, according to the Rambam? What would that mistake? I believe that you already acquired all your traits. Right. And what mistake would that result in? You wouldn't acquire. To believe that. No. Permanent. You would lose them. Yeah. yeah. To believe that they're permanent, but right? You would never lose. Right, and so therefore he's saying, uh, how do you solve that problem? Like, how do you how do you implement this mission practically? Keep on acting with the traits. Okay, so that's the main mistake here. The mistake, according to the Ramam, is if you think that once you get a trait, then you're going to retain it, and he's saying no, it could go away, or in fact, it, it will be go away unless you keep on reinforcing it with with the corresponding actions. And to my mind, this is an easier sell than the idea I said last week, because uh, it is, first of all, it's much more localized. It's not a whole theory of like the way you should be yourself. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a theory about behavior acquisition. Uh, anyone have, I mean, not, not to get too personal unless you, you know, unless you feel comfortable. Anyone have an example of, um, of if they fell, where they fell into this trap where you thought you had a certain uh, trait and you stopped practicing it and then you lost the trait? 
I thought I was like a really good dominer like, in, like when we had school. Yeah. Um, but then like during quarantine, I really like really was a dominer. Okay, good. That that's a that's a great example. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't mean great, like I'm applauding yeah. you, right? You know, you're, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know it's so wacky, everyone, but misunderstanding about what the consequences is if you do it. The other one, like the consequence for this one is that like, it'll go away. Yes. The other one, what was the consequence? So the other one, I mean, Rashi, that's kind of the only thing Rashi gave us, right? Is he gave us an example of the consequence of Rabbi Yochanan went off the dera, mm -hmm. you know? And that was really changing his entire identity. Uh, whereas Ramam is saying the consequence is you change your trait. That would be the, the consequence. Is this an only good trait? Um, no, a good, good, good question. This is, I say this is also bad traits, right? In other words, if you, um, well, there how would we? No bad well, no, 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 <laughs> how, how, yeah, yeah, you, <laughs> good, you caught me. <laughs> no, um, maybe, maybe this is actually the better answer, right? Is that uh, that there's no such thing as a good trait or a bad trait, right? Uh, it depends on how you use it. But what would be the application of this to using a trait in a bad way? Like, let's say, for example, well, someone you know, that, like they stopped not talking during. Right. No, 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 like no, no, a bad no. trait. Like you're a talking. Like you say, I'm a person who likes to talk a lot, and I talk during the We know that. Contradict. I was going to Okay. Yeah. So maybe it, maybe this is only for the good, the good aspect of traits. Well, I, I want to think about that a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, the bad one, and if you stop practicing your bad traits, then it'll go away. You can think. Oh, that's so that that's right. That's 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 what it's saying, right? Is if you. No, no, no. I think what Emily's saying is good. Right, like if you if you're constantly doing a uh, a bad thing, um, and then you stop doing it. Literally, you say you can't constantly do something unless you do it actively or something. No, it is. Maybe that needs to be like added in that. You shouldn't think of a trait you have as good or bad, or as a part of you forever. Like, no, you're no, you're no. <laughs> the only thing that I'm saying is whether or not it's permanent, and that you should actively keep doing it. So okay, so nothing is permanent unless you make it. All right, so <laughs> let's answer let's answer uh, uh, the question as directly as we can. What does the ROM say it applies to? What trait? What kind of trait? Action. Yeah, specifically virtuous, virtuous right? Yeah. So he says it applies specifically to a virtuous trait. We're asking a question really beyond that of to what, what insight does this give us into bad traits, right? So can we just do this, put that on the back burner for one second? And, um, uh, and I want to show you a corresponding thing uh, to just flesh out what the wrong I'm saying, okay? Um, hopefully we'll get back to your, your question today. So, oh, so this is just my bullet point summary of his idea. You don't have to like write this down or anything. So he's saying that the preservation of character traits depends on daily actions and habits. Don't trick yourself into thinking that you can maintain a positive character trait without habitually doing this, the corresponding actions. If you stop doing the actions, then your personality will change in that way. Okay, so I wanna introduce you to, on, on orientation day, I told you guys that I started uh, reading this new book. So the book is called Atomic Habits um, by James Clear. Um, and I wanted to read you a couple excerpts from this. And as we read, um, I, uh, here are things that we should think about. Uh, to what extent is, uh, his view are his views in line with the Rambam that we just learned. To what extent um, is it in line with our interpretation based on Rashi? And then to what extent do you agree or disagree with it? Is it consistent with your own life experience? Okay, so the way I envision it, we only have 15 minutes left. I'm so used to hour long classes, you know, like, yeah, anyway, so the way I envision it is let's just go around and, uh, and, and read and then like, discuss as we go. And if you have questions, we'll, 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 uh, we'll bring them up. He had, makes a lot of good points and I had to like choose stuff that would fit in. Okay. So can you, can anyone, can you read that far? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to just rotate? And if you want to skip reading, you don't have to read. Okay. Um, you want to read or not? No. Okay. Leah, you want to start? Sure. Uh, the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes part of your identity. The one, it's one thing, it's one thing to say that I'm the type of person who wants this. It's something very different to say I'm the type of person who is this. Yeah, go on. The more pride you have in a particular aspect of your identity, the more motivated you will be to maintain the habits associated with it. If you're proud of how your hair looks, you'll develop a sort of habit <laughs> to care for and maintain it. If you're proud of the size of your biceps, you'll make sure never to, you never skip an upper body workout. If you're proud of, of the stars unit, you'll be more likely to spend hours knitting each week. Once, you pride your, once your pride gets involved, you'll fight tooth and nail to maintain your habits. Okay, so first of all, can I, anyone identify with this in terms of like, does this ring true to you in your own experience? Yeah, I, yeah. The laughter indicated yes. Mm -hmm. you have an example? No. 
No, this is not. It's kind of true. Like, it, no, because I was laughing because it's literally because it's tied on my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, he knows the words. No, but it is. If you don't like something, you'll try to change it. Yeah, right, but, but he, you he like it, then you'll try and keep it. And so, but he's making a, a slightly more nuanced point, which is that if you identify, if you if you view yourself as the type of person who this is, if it's a matter of your identity, then you'll be more prone to acting in line with it. Okay, let's go one more just to clarify this. Ah, so that's why I'm asking: is this in line with Rashi, or no, is this in line or not with Rashi? You think it is? Yeah, because Rashi is saying each action is defining you. So here yeah. you're, saying you're making each action about defining you. So if you're saying like you want to be good, then you'll want to make each action good because it's defining. Okay, good. And I'm just gonna push you one step further. Why is this not falling into the trap of the the true self? Of you're continuing. No, because he says aspect of your identity. It's not who you are. It's just part yeah. of something you do. Okay, good. And and moreover, he's in other words. When you first read it, you might think, oh, he's saying this is who I am and therefore it contradicts Rashi. But what he's saying is, is you can change your identity based on different, different uh, habits that you do, you know? So he's not saying that there is a core real self that's like your true identity, you know? He's saying you can shape your identity based on the actions you repeat. Let's go one, one slide further. Uh, Ayala, go ahead. You might start a habit because of motivation, but the only reason you'll stick with one that it becomes part of your identity. Anyone can convince themselves to visit the gym or eat healthy once or twice. But if you don't shift the belief behind the behaviors, then it is hard to stick with long-term changes. Improvements are only temporary until they become part of who you are. Here's a few examples. The goal is not to read a book. The goal is to become a reader. The goal is not to run a marathon. The goal is to become a runner. The goal is not to learn an instrument. The goal is to become an, a musician. The goal is not to zero your his writing assignments. The goal is to become a writer. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna embarrass Ayala Teravello. So in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the survey about uh, the English thing beforehand, uh, I believe you said that you you are not a writer, right? But then she went on and like wrote amazing answers for all the questions, and then in the first assignment, like did a very very good job writing. And I'm like, it's very interesting because like if if I didn't ask you the question, I would have just assumed based on your writing that you were a writer, you know. But but the thing is, you have to change yourself into thinking of yourself as a writer, and then that'll make the behavior change easier. Okay. Um, I wrote that too. Though. Yes, yes, you did. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you, you do get credit for realizing it, uh, Shava. This is an example of what we were saying before. The way you talk about something and affects the way you think about something. The way you think about something affects your behavior. So yeah, that last part I really should have highlighted also is if your behavior and identity are aligned, you are no longer pursuing behavior change. You don't have to act contrary to your identity. You're just acting the way in line with the way that you believe yourself to be. So, for example, like, let's say, like, I mean, I think you would agree with this self-description of myself also. I view myself as an organized person, you know? So it's much easier for me when I'm doing something new to, like, okay, I'm going to do this in an organized, methodical way because I'm an organized person. But if you define yourself as a disorganized person, then saying I, I have to be organized is going contrary to your self-definition. Makes, makes change harder, okay? Um, uh, I like the fact you said that it makes it easier if you – yourself like a certain thing and then it just changes when you're not uh yeah isn't that what we're saying now also that if you if you i'm 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 missing it how is that the way you're saying it now seems like you're saying if you say i'm an organized person then it'll help you be organized yes or the other way you were Ah, oh, you mean for Rashi? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. So this is the point I wanted to bring out. Okay, good. So in other words, the, the difference is here you're using identity as a tool and you're realizing that your identity can change. 
the mistake Rashi was making is this is essentially who I am. This is the real me. This is uh, clear as viewing identity as something that we shape and we make. He's not saying that there is such a thing as a true self or a false self. The self is however you define yourself. You know? He's still saying a definition is helpful. And that's why I'm calling it a tool is that if you, if you say, I want to take on this type of identity, like almost, you can almost treat it like playing a part in a play. Okay. This is a muscle that the Stoics use that, uh, that if you, if you act the part, uh, let, let's say, for, let's say you view yourself as not, not nice. Okay. But if you tell yourself, I'm going to play the part of a nice person. Okay. And, and, and I want to be a good actor. And so I'm going to do that. Well, I guess the modern phrase is fade till you make it, you know? Yeah. Right. Right. But th th that's the wisdom of that phrase is that if you, if you think of yourself in that way, you will do actions that correspond to that behavior, but it's not falling into the Rashi trap of saying, I'm essentially at my core, a nice person. That's when, that's when you uh, will start to lower your guard. I think Rashi would say this is fine, in my opinion. So you're lying to yourself. <laughs> um, so I think it would only be a lie if, if it would be a lie if identity were a real thing that was a core part of you. But since identity is a, 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 a sum total of, of your actions and habits, then it's not a lie. It's just a goal. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I it mean, it's interrelated, meaning who, how you define yourself shapes what your behaviors are and how you behave is, 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 uh, will, will reinforce what your identity is. Kind of just like a trick. It's a trick phrase, yeah, exactly, yeah. It's it's coaching your mind to think of yourself in a certain way. Um, okay, uh, Eliana, you want to read? Um, um, any given day, you may struggle with your habits because you're too busy or too tired or too overwhelmed or hundreds of other reasons. Over the long run, however, the real reason you fail to stick with habits is that your self-image gets in the way. This is why you can't get too attached to one version of your identity. Progress requires unlearning. What, did I read that right? Yeah, you did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Becoming the best version of yourself requires you to continuously edit your beliefs and to upgrade and your identity. And see, this is where I think Rashi, you need to, I, this is where I think Rashi would look at that and go, yeah, right? Because he's saying that that yellow part is exactly what Rashi was trying to help you avoid, right? Is don't become too attached to one version of your identity. Realize it's a, a, a constantly changing thing. And I have to unlearn certain parts of my old identity in order to take on new parts, you know, new, new aspects of an identity. Um, it is hard. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to start giving you tools to, to, uh, you know, to, to help you along here. Um, Rich, you want to read or not? No, Emily? Uh, preset. Preset beliefs, like set from, oh. yeah. Um, every belief, including those about yourself, is learned and conditioned through your experience. More precisely, your habits are how you embody your identity. When you make your bed each day, you embody the identity of an organized person. When you write each day, you embody the identity of a creative person. When you train each day, you embody your identity. So that idea of embodying your identity is also consistent, I think, with Rashi, because he's saying what you do is who you are, you know, uh, not, not some underlying core thing of who you are. Um, this last one, I'm going to read Ayala, unless you want to read like Latin. Okay. Um, so th this is my favorite point. Okay. Out of the entire thing. The more you repeat a behavior, the more you reinforce the identity associated with that behavior. In fact, the word identity was originally derived from the Latin words essentitas, I don't know how to say it, which means being, and identitem, identidem, which means repeatedly. Your identity is literally your repeated beingness. That's what the word identity means. So what is identity? It's what you continually do, okay? Whatever your identity is right now, you only believe it because you have proof of it. If you go to church every Sunday, or if you go to every Sabbath, uh, for 20 years, you have evidence that you are religious. Uh, not that that's how we measure religiosity, but for Christians, I guess it works. Yeah. Uh, if you study biology for one hour every night, you have evidence that you are studious. If you go to the gym, even when it's snowing, you have evidence that you were committed to fitness. The more evidence you have for belief, the more strongly you will believe it. Okay. Um, this may be like the fast. Uh, how so? Since you say like I went to shul the past twenty years, uh, I am religious, then like we like ah uh, hey, okay. I don't go to shul, it's fine. Right. Oh, uh, okay. Good. Good. So I guess w what would you have to add I'm to? Not to yeah. Right. Okay. Good. I was gonna say what, what would you have to add to not fall into the trap like this type of uh, thinking here? Like what I would you have? To add 
Yeah. In other words, that it, you know, it kind of reminds me of like, let's say like the, the person who used to be a basketball star in high school and 20 years later still views themselves as a basketball player, even though they haven't touched a basketball in like 20 years, you know, like that, that person's making that mistake. Um, but if a person realizes the Ramam's point that I only have this trait because I keep practicing it, then I think that'll, that'll be a safeguard against the, the, the trap. It's like practice what you teach, but preach what you practice. Preach what you practice, but practice what you preach. Now, act is what you preach, but preach what you practice. No. <laughs> I think I added that part. Okay. You did? <laughs> um, okay, la last, uh, last part. I think this is the last. Yeah, this is the last point. Yeah. Ayla, you want to? Um, every action you take is a vote for the Oh, each. Oh, sorry, the first. Yeah. It was like a suggestion. Hey, maybe this is who I am. If you finish a book, then maybe you're the type of person who likes reading. If you go to the gym, then maybe you're the type of person who likes exercise. If you practice playing the guitar, perhaps you're the type of person who likes music. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. No single instance will transform your beliefs, but as the votes build up, so does the evidence of your new identity. This is one reason why meaningful change does not require radical change. Small habits can make a meaningful difference by providing evidence of a new identity. And if change is meaningful, it is actually big. That is a paradox of making small. Yeah, so I like that muscle of a, every action you take is a vote uh, for the type of person you wish to become. And also saying, what was that? Because every time you act, you are influencing who you become and reinforcing the identity that you're trying to take on and giving yourself evidence for believing that you really are that kind of person, right? So anytime you, you uh, again, anytime you exercise, um, sorry, any, anytime you, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, practice playing the guitar, right? Um, then you're reinforcing this notion of maybe I'm a, a type of person who likes music, you know, or, or every time like you, you clean something up, then you're like, I am a, a type of person who's clean, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're like, you're, you're, you're voting, you're suggesting and over time it builds up. So the, um, the homework assignment is I happen to have a copy of the first chapter of the book for all of you. No. Okay. Um, and it's, um, uh, I'd like you, I think it's, I forgot how long it is. Um, I love the cover. <laughs> um, I have to dissect every like sentence. Yeah, read it, and then I think the two I forgot the exact two questions I asked. I think like one of them is is find something. Uh, what was one thing you found useful and true, and how do you intend to implement it? And I forgot what the other question is. So it's basically like thought questions. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, and if you have any questions, let me know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> What? That was like my meaningful minute. Oh, I know I asked this on the thingy yesterday. Um, anyone